Hello and welcome to Skein 10 of the All Wound Up podcast. I'm Lauren Ray Romero and it's been eight months since I last recorded a podcast. So the last one was recorded on August 13th, 2018 and it's now May 5th, 2019. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram as Romero. You can find me on Ravelry as Mistral. We also have an All Wound Up podcast group over there uh, under All Wound Up Podcast. So if you search on the groups tab, we should come right up and you can join us if you'd like. We also have a Facebook page, the All Wound Up Podcast. If you search on Facebook, it'll come up and you can like and follow. If you like what you see here today, or if you liked what you saw in the past, eight, nine, podcasts, you can feel welcome to press the follow or subscribe button on YouTube because we love subscribers. Okay, so the reason I haven't podcasted um, in eight months is that in the last nine podcasts, I was actually largely unemployed. I don't know if I shared that with all of you. Uh, the year before, the 2016-2017 school year, I was fortunate enough to have a teaching position in the New York City DOE. I lost that position, and then I got a new one for this, this school year that we're in the middle of right now. So I'm very fortunate that I've been able to come back and pursue my teaching career. Uh, it just eats up a lot of time. <laughs> um, so it's my second year teaching, but it's really my first year again. So I've had a lot to do and not a lot of knitting time and not a lot of energy for the things that bring me joy. But I've decided that in the interest of self-care, I should start to do the things that make me happy again. And podcasting is something that really makes me happy. So I'm here to share with you information about my knitting, about things that are going on that I'm aware of in the knitting community, and just to talk to you about my projects. So um, I know this weekend is Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I'm very happy for everybody who got to go. Um, I couldn't take the time investment to uh, spend a whole weekend traveling to go to a festival right now, but I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's pictures and everybody's acquisitions that they get at Maryland Sheep and Wool. So if you went, please you know, continue posting things on your Instagrams and Facebooks, as I know you will. Um, and I'm really happy to see them all. So when we last met, I was actually hosting a shawl along, a summer shawl along. I was co-hosting that with Groovy Hughes Fibers. And I haven't forgotten about you. So um, if you participated in the summer shawl along, great job. There were lots of entries posted on the um, Ravelry group. And I'm really pleased to announce that the winner of the prize, and I will ship that out to you, I haven't forgotten you, the winner of the prize is Divine Darlene, the Ravelry user Divine Darlene, um, and I know how to find you, I believe, on Facebook, so I will be contacting you for your information, but you will be winning a skein of yarn over New York for your shawl entry. Uh, it was number 16 when I picked it on the random number generator, and you will be getting that shortly. So it's a skein of yarn over New York from her I Love New York t-shirt collection. So that'll be coming out pretty soon. I just have to contact you and get that to you. Okay, so all this time, I bet you think I have a ton of finished objects, right? I have two. Um, I did finish an, a couple of gift knitting projects, but like I said, I really, there hasn't been a lot of time for me to knit. So I do have two finished objects for you and I will show them off. Um, the first one was for a knit along and then I forgot to enter them as I so often do, but they are a pair of colorwork mittens. They're called Wit Beyond Measure and they are Ravenclaw mittens from Harry Potter. And I did finish both. These are knit out of lambstrings yarn in the Tralala sock base. And they, um, I used the colors Relax, It's Just Magic, that's the dark blue, and The Gathering, which is the gold color. Um, I prefer the book Ravenclaw colors, so that's blue and bronze, and that's why I went with these colors. A lot of people went with gray for the eagle. 
So these are my second pair of colorwork mitts, and I have to say I absolutely love doing colorwork mitt mittens. I'm definitely going to be making some more um, going forward. I find that they are a surprisingly fast project, um, and I think they're a really good way to get your feet wet for colorwork because this is only my second colorwork project, and I it's really um, not that hard to do and I feel like because it's such a small project it's a safe way to try it out you're not you know worried about working a whole sweater I have more than half of each of my colors left in each skein so I think that's why I was able to actually finish them but they were a lot of fun to knit I wore them all winter and they'll definitely be being joined by more skeins I also liked that since I chose that was harder to see wait since since I chose the Ravenclaw mittens they have an R detail on the thumb there it is and since my last name is Romero I felt like that was pretty cool just rocking my mittens so I was really happy to finish those it's one of my two finished objects um, the other one is a shawl a shawlette really um, and it is knit from Groovy Hues Fibers in the Twisted and Groovin base. And the colorway is called Fools and Kings. This is a colorway that it's not easy to get from Groovy Hues. Um, from my understanding, Suzanne has to use some kind of special dyes that aren't what she usually uses. And that's how she got these beautiful colors. But this is Sailing by Meg Gadsby. And it's basically... Um, garter stitch panels repeated with some stockinette stripes in there so you can really see how the colors of the yarn play um, in both stitch variations and I knit this largely on the bus on the way home from work I take a public bus and in the schoolyard with my kids who all tell me they want to learn to knit so next year I'm gonna have a knitting club I'm gonna teach middle schoolers in the Bronx how to knit and we're gonna have a good time but yeah, so that's, those are my two finished objects. I've got a shawlette and I've got a pair of mittens. I did a couple of gift knitting projects. I did a baby hat and one or two other similarly sized things. Um, but that's really been my knitting, just two things. So like I said, I'm trying to take back my life um, and have a life outside of school where I'm not just sitting on the couch and saying, oh my god, I have so much to do, and then playing games on my phone. No, I should use that time to knit and podcast and do things that I love. So I do have two active whips that I am working on pretty consistently. Um, this was my Christmas Eve cast on. It's in a Two Sticks and You project bag, which it's starting to get a little bit too big for. And I may have to switch up, but this is a Two Sticks and You project bag. And this was my Christmas Eve cast on, like I said. So um, this has been my main knitting project for 2019 so far. It has been a lot of fun to do. This is the Madewell Cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli. And it is basically a stockinette cardigan. We lost my light. I got to pause back knocked over my light I don't know how okay anyway this is the Madewell by Hohi Locatelli and it is basically a giant simple stockinette cardigan which is why I think I've had a lot of success with it because I can pick it up and put it down easily I'm knitting I believe it's the size extra extra large or extra large um, to fit around my bust comfortably. A lot of people said the sleeves ran small, so I made sure that I knit um, a bigger size than I typically would. I am on the first sleeve, so all I have left to do is finish the second, finish, finish the sleeves, and do the button band, which is one by one ribbing all around. Um, it's 28 rows of one by one ribbing my face yeah so I'm I'm down to the part where it's gonna start to get a little bit less 
fun. I hate ribbing. I don't know why I hate ribbing. I just do. Um, but I'm really looking forward to wearing it. I was alternating skeins throughout the body, but as you can see, when I got down to about here, it was time to switch to another two skeins and the colors are not matching up quite as well as I had hoped they would. However, I'm still overall happy with it and I'm going to be able to wear it. So it is what it is, is basically what I'm filing that under. The yarn is Twisted Sock by Yarn Ink. I have a complete skein, sorry, crinkling. I have a complete skein of Flamingo, which is the main color. This is the fifth and final skein that I have. Um, the thing about it is, is that this skein looks more like the first two skeins did. Um, and if I'd paid attention, I would have alternated the less speckly skeins with the more speckly skeins, and I didn't, so it is what it is. But this is Flamingo on Twisted Sock. Um, remember that, guys, hand-dyed yarn. Check your skeins, lay them out next to each other, really take a look, wind them all at the beginning of the project so that you know what you're getting into and you can see if one skein is drastically different. It's not the dyer's fault, it's not anybody's fault except my own for not checking, so it is what it is. The Madewell um, pattern does call for elbow patches and I do think I'm going to knit them, so there's gonna be another little bit of crinkling. I do think I'm going to knit the elbow patches. So what I'm thinking to do for them is I have another skein of the twisted, or sorry, tough sock, tough sock from Yarn Ink, and that's in the Raven colorway. I have a skein of bright pink, which is from Groovy Hues Fibers. It's cuddly and grooving base, so it's a little bit of a different base. It's got less of a twist, but I have that. And then I have a natural skein. So I'm thinking I'll do these three colors together to go with the speckles. I kind of wanted to throw in a little bit of yellow. There's a little bit of yellow in the um, flamingo, but I don't think I'm going to. I think that would involve um, buying extra yarn for this project that I've had the yarn for for so long. And, um, in addition to that, there's so little yellow that I'm worried that it would stand out in the wrong way on the elbow patches. So I'm almost done. Hopefully by the next time I podcast, which should be in a month, um, I'll have this, at least the sleeves finished so that you can see them um, and where they are. But this is my Madewell and I'm hoping that I have at least one cool day that I can wear it, maybe a cool summer night before next winter, but that's my, my big whip. The other whip that I do have going on is in a Darn Yarn MN bag. It's got wool at the bottom, vegan leather strap, and I enjoy it a lot. This is The Pagona by Stephen West, and... Here's where I am right now. I'm um, basically what you're doing for this shawl is you're making stockinette panels and garter panels and they kind of stripe out in almost a bat wing shape. So that's where I am. This is mostly brainless knitting. I'm gonna move my stitch marker up right now or my progress keeper up. This is mostly brainless knitting, but um, there are a couple of increases on the shawl to give it the bat wing shape. So what I'm going to be doing is the next time I knit a right, the next time I knit a right side row, I'm going to switch all of these beaded rings out for plain steel jump ring, jump rings, and then I'm going to switch um, and put beaded rings only where the increases are, so that I'm able to um, knit this more easily on the bus. Because at this point, I have to take out the pattern. Um, and if anybody's ever ridden New York City Public Transit, you know you can't take out a pattern and you're knitting on the bus. Mm -mm. I take the 4042 uh, 40, in the Bronx straight up East Tremont Avenue and it is a crowded, busy bus. Everybody takes that bus. I feel like everybody in New York City is on my bus. So 
yeah, I'm going to definitely be switching that out to make this into brainless knitting. But the yarn is Groovy Hoos Fibers Cuddly and Groove and Sock. And the colorway is these boots are made for walk-in. If any of you have ever run into Suzanne at a trunk show or a fiber festival, she has a hitchhiker made out of this colorway. It's one of her samples. And she hadn't dyed the colorway in a while. But when I saw her at a trunk show in September, I think, um, she had it available and I had to have it. So there it is. <clears throat> Those are my two active whips. I do have, if you guys remember, a lot of other whips, but these are my two main ones that I have going on right now. My plan for the summer, when I have lots of time, is in addition to all of my planning and getting ready for the next school year, to um, try to finish off some of those whips. I made a made um, I made a make nine 2019, and I would share that with you. But um, as it's May and I've only finished one thing from that make nine, I think I've decided that I'm gonna push it off. I'm gonna not count it as a failure. I'm just gonna reuse my make nine for 2020. And my goal for the rest of this year will be to finish some of these whips. Like, I have a summer tank top in silk. I should totally finish that and wear it over the summer. So as soon as this sweater comes off the needles, that's going to be what I pick up next. And then hopefully I'll be able to finish some of the many shawls that I have sitting around my apartment in project bags gathering dust. Yeah, because I really, I want to finish the things that I knit. I try to only cast on things that I really love and can't love them if they're sitting in project bags under a chair in the living room. But can love them if I finish them over the summer and wear them. That's the goal. So that's my main goal is to do that. All right. Um, I'm not going to share eight full months of acquisitions with you because I know that there's a lot more that I've bought other than what I or received. I didn't buy all of this. Um, in the last eight months um, but I'm gonna share some of what I got over the last eight months so that you um, can experience it and I can show it off on the internet because if I didn't show it off on the internet does it really exist so um, <clears throat> I'll start with Rhinebeck I was fortunate enough to get to work at the Bayhaven Short Tales booth this year at Rhinebeck and Bayhaven Short Tales is a small shepherdess run business that's out on the east end of Long Island so I had the opportunity to work with her and that was really awesome to get to see run back from the vendor side of things um, definitely really cool um, but one of the things that that enabled me to do was to get um, some of the Miss Babs exclusive colorway um, this is the Miss Babs run back exclusive colorway it's very purple and I am not a big purple person. So this is actually not my Miss Babs exclusive. This is my friend Helen, who I haven't seen since September. Um, it's her Miss Babs exclusive colorway. But this is the yummy two-ply base that Miss Babs has. And even though I'm not a very purple person, this is a beautiful purple. Um, she's got this dark, rich shade, as well as the lighter lavender. And it's got brown and tan and green mixed in with it so it really is a very beautiful colorway um, that I'm very happy is going to have a good purple loving home so these are somebody else's purple skeins but it was very exciting that I was able to get some Miss Babs exclusive colorway because it gets, it gets intense at her booth fighting for these you you actually do have to fight for your skein because people are cutthroat she puts out a limited amount each day and that's it um yeah but people go nuts for it people like sprint in the gate to go and get it so i was very fortunate that i was able to pick up two skeins so there's that also from miss babs also from rhinebeck i got two 400 gram sweater babies fingering weight yarn these are the hang on i have notes these are the katadin yarn 
Gatad and Skein. It's 100% Superwash Blue Face Leicester. And this one is called Clownfish. This is for me. It will become a sweater of some sort. It's 439 grams, so 1,750 yards of yarn. And this is going to become a sweater. I haven't decided if it'll be a pullover or a cardigan just yet, but this is for me. The second one, which is in the black cherry colorway, is going to be a sweater for my mother at someday, at some point. Um, but I definitely, I've never worked with 100% blue face leister, and I like, just from feeling it, I like the, the woolier feeling than um, a merino has. So it's something that I'm looking forward to trying, and I'm going to do more than try it because I've got <laughs> two sweater skeins. These things are heavy, though, um, and they're solid. Like, you can, you can really hear it when I hit it, I think. If you can, I'm going to cut that out. Um, but yeah, they're, they're giant sweater babies. And I was really excited to see them because it means that when you're wrestling through the Miss Babs booth experience, you can just pick up one and you know you have a sweater. You don't have to double back and look for more. So that was good. Definitely liked those. So that's what I'm going to show you of my Rhineback haul. Um, I did, I did also do an advent calendar this year. So I have, these are all the minis from my advent calendar. I won't show them. Um, but I did an advent calendar this year. I participated in, or the last year, I participated in the Yarn Cafe Creations Dragon Horde yarn, um, advent calendar and each year they do a hogwarts calendar i'm wishing that i'd done the first year last year was year two so last year was um chamber of secrets and each mini is named after something from the book so that was pretty cool um the final gift is a full skein based on your house so this is my ravenclaw yarn which is beautiful and it has the bronze in it so it's book ravenclaw again yes um and i'm trying to decide what I'm going to knit out of this. I either want to do a cowl or a shawlette, I think, so that I can show it off. I feel like this would look really nice with jeans and a cute top. So that's my goal. The other big object in that advent calendar is 24 minis, one full skein, and then a gift. So this is a By the Bay Yarn Company, a By the Bay Yarn Company canvas bag that has all four Hogwarts houses on the outside and um, it has the the thick carrying strap. I haven't used it yet because all of the knitting that I've done has been on the public bus and I feel like if I drop this bag on the public bus the white is going to get destroyed. So I've been holding off on using this project bag so that I don't ruin it but it was an awesome advent calendar to sign up for, and I signed up for it again this year. So I'll be getting Prisoner of Azka Azkaban minis this year, and hopefully I will be posting them on Instagram or something this time around because I didn't do anything to acknowledge my awesome advent calendar last year. All right. Went to Vogue Knitting Live for the first time. So that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't actually buy that much at Vogue Knitting Live. I found it to be really overwhelming. I don't know if I'll go back again next year because it was so overwhelming, but I'm really happy to say that I went. So I think that next year if I go, I will make a plan and um, really know what booths are there so that I can visit and I will visit specific booths, and I will also um, make a point of um, having a shopping list because I was just kind of overwhelmed um, when I went in. The lights were so much, it was so hot. Um, I wore a t-shirt, I didn't even try to wear, actually no, I went in with my shawlette that I just showed off, the one, um, the sailing shawlette. I didn't even leave it on. It was just so hot and crowded and the lights were a lot and it was loud and eh. so um, I can say I went. I don't know if I'll go again. 
Um, however, every booth and every vendor that I interacted with, I was really happy once I stepped into a booth. It was walking down the like corridors that was a nightmare. So I did buy from two vendors. I only bought yarn from two vendors. And one of them I've bought from before. That's Barnyard Knits. This is the leaf colorway on her sock base. So it's a nice green. I do plan to make socks with this. However, um, if you've watched the podcast before, you know I'm not much of a sock knitter. So we'll see. Um, the plan is to make Christmas socks. The night before, the night before Christmas, there's a pattern. It's got little trees down each leg. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to actually do it though. I may turn it into something that I'm more likely to finish. Um, but this is Barnyard Knits sock in the leaf colorway and it's a very rich green. All right. So the other thing that I bought, go big or go home. I bought a sweater quantity um, of yarn from Little Fox. So here's my sweater quantity. I plan to make a cardigan from Tin Can Knits out of this. I think it's called Clark or Jones. Um, this is a merino silk yak blend. It's not dyed at all. This is the natural color. Um, and the, the base is called Bosa. Um, I was looking at all different colors and I was like, I really love this one. And I was like, this isn't even dyed. This is amazing. So I bought Little Fox yarn. I got a free cute little pin for my pin bag. And um, I definitely plan to make a sweater out of this. They were very nice people. I've run into their yarn before. I've run into Little Fox yarn before at Dances with Wool in Richmond, Virginia, which is my vacation yarn store. <laughs> yarn store. And almost every year we go to my cousin, Sarah, who lives in Richmond. We go to, or outside of Richmond, she lives. We go to her house after Christmas before New Year's and we celebrate our family Christmas without having to worry about who's got plans with what other family members and what's going on so that it's stress-free and we get to enjoy ourselves. But I always make a point of going to um, to Dances with Wool and this is the first time I'd seen Little Fox yarn anywhere other than Dances with Wool so I had to get some. Um, that was definitely a favorite booth that I went that I stepped into it was right on a corner in Vogue Knitting Live so I expected that it would be crazy and that I'd get jostled and bumped and knocked out of the way a lot but it was really very calm like I said once you step into a booth at Vogue Knitting Live it's like different than being outside um in the like the main crush of people so that's good um if you do ever go on your most booths are calm and have space to move around and you know you can breathe a little bit so just keep that in mind unless you're going into a booth where they're like selling la bien ami uh in which case good luck godspeed <laughs> you get crushed but yeah so this is going to be a sweater it's going to be a cabled cardigan someday right now no right now it's just going to sit in my stash and look pretty all right, two more acquisitions, three more, two more. Um, one of them is yarn and one of them is not. So this is Groovy Hues Fiber, silken and, Silky and Groovin, and this is the shawl length skein. So if I hold it up next to a regular skein of yarn, this is the one from uh, Barnyard, you can see it's a little bit bigger. That's because it's a skein and a half. This is 600, 600 yards. Um, of yarn and what that means is if you knit a slightly larger shawl you can knit it and only have to weave in the beginning and the end end um, which is something that I like I usually weave ends as I go but um, it's nice to not have to do that so this is going to definitely become a shawl of some sort possibly bosque pair not a hundred percent sure yet but this is going to be a shawl and it's going to be a shawl for me. I do wear them a lot at work because my classroom is heated to about 80 degrees. So I find myself wearing short sleeves most of the time. And then if I go into a part of the building that's not 
as well he did, I want a shawl. So um, that's definitely what that'll become. And um, yeah, so this colorway actually is called the Exquisite Whisperer, and it was dyed for one of the admin, originally dyed for one of the admins of the Exquisite Yarn and Fiber community. Um, but Suzanne released it uh, to members of her group as well, and that's when I was able to score this Silky Shawl Lengths game. So I'm really excited to get to play with this because usually when I think bright pink, I think bright pink, I think flamingos. Um, but this, it's a sort of rich, hang on, I'm trying to get it so it doesn't blow out and that it looks true. That's as good as I can get it. It has this deep, rich pink that's really highly saturated, and I like that a lot. So, can't wait to see how it knits up. Um, gotta finish some whips so that I can see how this knits up. All right, my final acquisition was my birthday gift from my mother. And anytime I'm about to start a project, since I started using chow goos, I go to the store and I buy a pair of chow goos. So, my mother got me the interchangeable set so that I can hopefully stop buying individual chow goo. Oh wait, that one's not. So that I can hopefully stop buying individual chow goos because I have a lot of them. Um, and it's not, it doesn't make any sense. I love my interchangeable sets that I have other than this one. So here we go. So she got me the five inch tips the full set, so the large and the small. It means it goes from US 2, which a lot of interchangeable sets do not have, all the way up to US 15. It does have slots in the front that you can put additional needles in. So I'm thinking that what I might do is eventually buy myself a set of shorter tips so that I have them for making hats and things, and I can put them in that same envelope. But she also got me this little guy, which is a set of two and three inch tips, and they're from sizes zero to three in two and three inch tips, and they have shorter cables. I believe they only go up to 16 inches, but um, a lot of the sweaters that I've made, I've made two and a half, um, require the size two and a half needle for the ribbing. So since I like making fingering weight sweaters, this could be really helpful because it'll allow me to do that tiny ribbing as well as to make all of the, all the socks I make. All the socks. So many socks. I've had actually, I believe I started them before we last saw each other. <laughs> A pair of socks made out of yarn from the Cozy Knitter. They're still not done. Socks. You would think, I can knit a shawl, I can knit a pair of mittens, no problem, out of one skein of yarn, but for whatever reason, I just lose my rhythm when it's socks. I don't know. So, we'll see. We'll see if they get used for socks. Anyway, it's really been great to see you guys again, see you, um, and I hope that I'm able to start podcasting more regularly again. That's my goal is to record once a month, um, maybe more over the summer, but during the school year, my goal is once a month. Um, I feel like that'll help keep me accountable for making progress on knitting projects and just help ensure that I do things for me as well as for my students. Um, so hopefully I'm able to see you guys more regularly and I stay on top of my podcast. Please subscribe. Please like this video if you liked what you saw. It helps get me search results. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming back if you're a returning viewer. And thanks for joining me for the very first time if this is your first time here. All right. See you in about a month. Hopefully. It'll be almost the end of the school year and I will be good to go on summer knitting. Bye guys.